So first and foremost, I want to thank everybody for, for joining the webinar today. Um, what we're going to really do uh, is, uh, well, first, let me introduce myself. I'm Mike Zemlinski. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the uh, Chief Commercial Officer at Iconic. Um, Iconic is a uh, hybrid cloud media management and collaboration system. Uh, and uh, with me is Robert Kruger, and I'll let him introduce himself very quickly. Hello, everybody. My name is Robert Kruger. I'm co-founder and managing partner at Less Pain Software, and we're going to have an awesome webinar together. Yep. So what we really wanted to do today for you guys is uh, we've had quite a few customers that are using the two solutions together and sharing with us some of their experiences. We've played with some workflows and we just want to share some of the successes we've seen out there. Um, just to give you an idea of what the webinar is going to entail today and what we're going to actually show you. Um, Robert's in Germany right now, and I'm in the US. Uh, we have an Iconic system set up where he has a storage gateway uh, in Germany as well that is connected to our Iconic system. Um, and we're going to import some camera RAWs uh, and, and convert the decartify them, so to speak, uh, in Germany. And as soon as that process happens, I'm going to be able to start working with them in the US in proxy format. And then we're going to show how to link all that stuff up as well. Uh, we're going to start with a little bit of an overview of Kino itself and would take you through some of the high level features and some of the fun that's associated with that. And then we're going to go into uh, handing some of that stuff off to me in Iconic land. And then we're going to play back and forth a little bit. Um, so with that all said, I'm going to actually hand it over to Robert now. He'll be able to share his screen and he's going to walk you through Kino uh, and some of the features and uh, functionality that we think is pretty cool. So there all you go, right. Robert. Thanks, Mike. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, first, let me give you a super brief overview of what Kino is before we dive into the demo. Kino is an, is an app for Mac and Windows for VJs, editors, producers, DITs, and editorial staff. Uh, its main premise is to help with all the daily tasks from camera to edit and storage management. It increases productivity by eliminating repetitive tasks and data, data loss between workflow steps. And its concept is basically all needed tools in those workflow steps in one well-integrated, easy to use user interface. It's used by production companies, video departments, creative agencies, sports leagues, broadcasters, and many more types of companies in 70 plus countries. And it's used on and offset in editing and editorial work and QC workflows. And it was chosen as new shooter product of the year um, 2016 and 2019. The functionality that's packed into Kino as a powerful media browser. You'll see all these features in action um, in a minute. A professional video player, audio player, field logger, batch transcoder, secure backup, NLE integration with the four major NLEs, and some more integrations which we're not going to dive in uh, to today, and tons of little productivity aids like batch renaming, batch still export, reporting, Excel exports, and more. But that's not going to be the focus of today as well. Let me quickly show some of the highlights. For those of you who haven't seen Kino before, um, I'm going to do this real quick. So you're probably not going to be able to follow each and every step. The main point of this short demo is to give you a feel for the ease of use and the power of Kino. So Kino presents itself as a finder-like or explorer-like media browser that just shows you the material that you have on your drives. And it has the same user experience regardless of what you browse, whether it's your NAS, SAN, or your camera media. And um, one thing that's very important to note here is that you don't have to really set up anything before you have this user experience. So you have no cataloging or formal ingest step before that. You just point it to your media and um, start working. So the core of this is this tree view that shows you your devices and the center area, which we call browser, that shows you the material in different views. That could be the thumbnail view that gives you a bit more visual overview and the more technical list view that shows you a lot more metadata like frame rate and aspect ratio, duration, all these things, and is totally customizable. So uh, for each workflow step, um, each of these 
view, view types um, has their specific advantages. So just to show um, that the user experience is uh, exactly the same on all drive types, I have a camera card plugged in here, which is going to be the starting point of the workflow that we're going to demo today. And you have more or less the same experience here as you have on your shared or even cloud drives. But the real power of Kino comes when you want to um, use the feature, which is by far the most um, by far the most popular feature in Kino, which we call drill down. That's activated using this little button up here. And what that does is it entirely flattens, or rather, it presents you a flattened view of your entire folder structure. You see the blue background here, and you can further drill down into this folder structure. Now I'm in the project folder, which is really representative of a typical production drive with a project per folder and um, or rather folder per project. And we have even this project's folder structure, we have 2,300 2, something video items. And I'm now able to visually browse that um, using this view. But the real power comes when you combine this with filtering. So um, you already saw that we have some basic filtering applied by these quick filters and now filtering videos only. But if you, if you combine this with metadata, for example, I'm using a keyword here, which matches every text-based type of metadata that Kino is capable of indexing. And just by typing drone and car, I get from these uh, 3000 uh, videos, or let's take the full 5000, I get all the videos that match um, drone and car and I can let's make this more complicated. For example, let's find all the material that I've already applied at least uh, one star rating to on this entire production drive and now say, okay, I want to find one star, at least one star drone footage, which is ProRes. So um, this is the functionality that you get uh, right out of the out of the box with Kino with no database setup or anything else. The speed that you experience here is only possible because we do a lot of um, very aggressive uh, on the fly caching. And the more you use a drive, the faster the user experience gets. So getting back to the to what you can actually do with the assets that you that you are browsing. Um, let's take a look at the detail view here. You have a professional media player in here that essentially plays any relevant format, including raw formats like Red Raw and um, Blackmagic Raw and a number of other formats. And you have a very powerful content overview that lets you visually na navigate and find uh, things that you look for. You have in terms of metadata, you have the basic production metadata here. Um, you have time-based metadata represented by these markers, and you can also use what we call subclips and kind of lingo. Those are essentially multiple in and out points that you can use in field logging to prepare your material, for example, for, for editing. So once you have your material and Kino, you can, as I said, you can do the field logging, which could be clip level, which could be um, time code level, but also you can do batch logging on the entire uh, on the on the entire rush. You could, for example, set tags on entire rush. So it's a very very efficient field logger as well. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can batch transcode very easily. We have uh, tons of predefined presets here for the for the common tasks and for the common intermediate proxy or dailies uh, formats. But you can also build very complex um, custom custom presets, which I'll come back to in our workflow that will that will demo. For example, this is a ProRes preset that complies a camera a lot. And um, the whole user interface is easy enough to use for um, really editorial stuff to pick it up just by just by trying it. 
but it's powerful enough for you for your DITs or admins who can tweak uh, presets and all these things. Um, the next thing that's noteworthy is you can um, send all your material that you have in Kino to the NLE of, um, of your choice. Um, let me check this. All right, you can use the send to function in here and you can send it to Premiere Pro, to DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, or you can export Avid LAE, ALE. That includes all your metadata for all the four NLEs, all the metadata that you've seen in Kino. Um, you can seamlessly export to that NLE of your choice. All right, so that's just a quick overview of what it of what it does. And now let's dive into our workflow that Mike already set up. So uh, I'm in Germany, I inserted my camera card here. I have a rush um, that this is Panasonic camera material. Um, you know, these nasty folder structures that you always have within these camera media formats and um, kind of doesn't force you to uh, deal with with these. I'm, I'm only um, expanding these for uh, demonstration purposes. So, kind of flattens all this and takes care of all the all the container decoding. For example, if you have complex formats like Panasonic P2, these might represent span clips, which actually are multiple files on your drives, and kind of detects these structures, and you just get to deal with these clips. So you um, can immediately preview your material um, while it's still on the SD card. Here you see those washed out colors because it was shot in log. And one of the key features of Kino's player is that you can apply a lot in real time and preview the material without abusing an NLE for this kind of workflow, which would be uh, a, lot, um, a lot slower. So one of the functions that we're going to use in the beginning is we're going to do a verified copy or other people call it offloading to an ingest folder on we could use up to four destinations i'm just going to use this incoming folder here and it's going to be a industry standard xx hash checksum verification that's applied while the job is running here um, I'm going to show you this workspace section up here. That's actually something like a bookmarks folder. If you frequently use the same folders in a project, you just arrange them by dragging them up here. And if I click here, you can see that, well, actually you can't see anything yet, which is sort of unexpected. I have to, ah, oh, there it is, admit. Now you see the copy progress is still ongoing and we see the material coming in uh, as it's being copied. And the first thing that I'll do once the copy is done is um, since I know that all the material was shot in log, um, what I do is I select all the clips and I assign the right camera left to them. So I no longer have to do this for each clip, which I demoed and the uh, in the preview on the card. So you see the thumbnails change and all the material is displayed in the correct colors. This doesn't interfere with a clip that that doesn't change any file. That's just an association with Enkino. So my next step in the process would be that I go through these clips and do a quick review of these. Um, check these for this home story type material. Um, let's say I'm going to apply ratings to the ones that I actually want to send Mike. That one's nice as well. And I'm not going to use this one. Um, that's a nice, you know, that's, this is another angle. That's good. And let's use this one as well. And so that this is my process and I went through the material. You see the ratings have been applied. And now um, if this, I mean, now it's pretty obvious which ones I've chosen, but imagine this would be a much bigger rush Then I would 
um, use a filter to make it a bit more obvious what I have selected. And then what, I, what I'm demoing here now is that we need to do something with the material. I mean, if, if I just were to send this material as is to Mike, then I could just drag it to my iconic ISG watch folder. But in this case, I want to apply some transformations. So uh, examples of this would be, for example, if you have something like a P2 card with span clips, you would likely rewrap the material to get rid of those, uh, of, of those spanning structures to just have clean single clips um, or other, other cases where you might need rewrapping. In this case, I want to demo applying a lot in the process. So more or less generating a 10-bit ProRes intermediate from an 8-bit log format. And I'm just going to do this. Um, one way of doing this would be to use this preset, which I've already shown you, the ProRes 422 with the camera lab. And I could now just select the, the folder as a target folder, the iconic watch folder, but we can even do that a lot smarter in Kino. We have a function that is called delivery and that lets you define endpoints to streamline your workflow. Now I have a, an endpoint that is essentially in this case, just just my watch folder. It's just a file operation, could be an FTP endpoint, could be uh, other things. But that streamlines the workflow. I can input um, a title for this delivery. And in this case, I don't need to select the destination folder because that's, I'm just going to send it to the watch folder that I have set up for Iconic. And just to show you what I can configure here, in this case, I'm going to select the option send transcoder files and kind of will automatically transcode all the files with this preset ProRes 422 with camera lab before copying them into this folder or transferring them to uh, via uh, another transfer technology. Okay, if I do this, you see here that in the background, Kino is doing the transcodes and once the transcodes are done, you will see those files popping up in the watch folder. Okay, now we have the first one in here. Let me check. Okay, it has automatically generated the subfolder kind of webinar. And now the ISG should already be doing its work and should be generating proxies in the background and sending all this material over to Mike. Let me do something secret here as well. We'll explain what that was um, later, or rather Mike will explain that. And so my part of the workflow at this point is basically done. I have selected the material. I have prepared it in a way that makes it super easy for the editor not having to deal with any log footage or LUTs they can just start their edit, which um, Mike will probably do right now. Handing over to you, Mike. Thanks. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is share out my screen. <clears throat> and we will take a look. And you'll see already, uh, before anything else has happened, uh, these items are starting to show up um, inside of Iconic. And you'll notice if I pop out my Formats tab, I can see that the original high res of this is on the Kino ISG in Germany, it's a 190 megabyte file, but I already have the uh, pro the LUT uh, written proxy in here. I can start to do things like tag these. So I can actually even search for everything and just say, hey, find me everything that's got the word Kino in it. There's the Kino webinar. And then inside of that, here's all the clips that Robert sent over to me. I can now say, all right, cool. I'm gonna tag that with some metadata. So. You know, we're going to say three star rating, webinar category, language, English, and uh, whatever. Um, and the release date will set that for today. We can set other metadata, that sort of thing. But because it was simply dropped into a folder that a storage gateway was watching on the other side of the world, we actually did get some uh, degree of preset uh, metadata associated with this uh, from Kino. Now, the other thing that um, 
I can do now is also make time-based markers if I want. So I can go in and say, mark it in here, scroll over and mark an out and say, you know, smile is good, use this in the edit. And to be fair, this could be done by anybody anywhere in the world at this point. So our high res media is still living on a DIT station in Germany, but I'm already starting to tag it, mark it up, work with it and, and that sort of thing inside of Iconic. And I can hop between my search results here. I can also, you know, uh, maybe point out things that I'd like to see. So in, in this one, you know, I can actually draw on the frame here and say, you know, whoops. Should we blur out this bit or crop, right? And send that in as well. Um, so uh, what will end up happening at this point now is we've got some markers and some information with some endpoints and some tags. Let's hop over to Premiere now and do our exact same search inside of our iconic Premiere panel and search for Kino and grab our clips. And what I can do now is I'm going to actually open the proxies. And what that's going to do is grab all the proxies from Iconic and it's going to add them all into my Premiere project. And now I can go through them and see the markers that were made. So in this case, you know, I can hover over this really quickly and say, smile is good, use that in the edit. I could also look at my markers here and see that that is uh, available. Um, but what I'm gonna do is mark an in and an out here. Whoops, in and out. We'll throw that into a new sequence. And then we'll also grab, uh, let's see, let's go to this shot and uh, We'll use from this point to this point. Throw that into our edit real quickly. String this down. And last but not least, we'll grab an in, grab an out. And there's that guy. And our last clip here, which we did have a marker on that's, you know, should we crop out our arm? So I will uh, grab this full clip, throw it in, maybe trim it down a little bit here. And uh, let's actually go into our effects controls and motion and scale. And let's take a look at that guy. And let's zoom it in a little bit so that we don't have the arm in there anymore. Cool. So now we've done our little quick and dirty edit. And again, I'm working 100% in proxies at this point. So what I'm going to do now is hop back over into Iconic. And I'm going to go to my project panel and I'm going to upload the project to Iconic. So now I've saved my project file uh, from within the system. No problems there. Um, and the other thing that I'm going to do is actually upload the sequence itself. And in this case, I'm gonna use a review and approve preset. This is just an Adobe Media Converter uh, preset that I've got going. Um, so essentially, this is taking the original raster of my sequence, uh, original frame rate, but it's using a lower res version so that I can start to interact with people on my edit. I go ahead and hit upload. And as soon as I hit upload, you'll see it handed it off to Adobe Media Encoder. So we will get a, uh, a export submitted here in a second. Uh, we should get an export submitted here in a second. There it goes. Oh, oh whoops. I think I, I, I did an oopsie and I uh, forgot to call this webinar. And what I actually accidentally did there, believe it or not, is I overwrote my proxy file with the name of my uh, sequence file, which was a very dumb thing to do. But that's not a problem. I can actually uh, go here, get rid of this clip, which was 0100, and hop back into Iconic, grab it, and uh, let's resynchronize our project real quickly. Whoops. Project, cool. Close these guys and grab that guy again. Max up proxy. And let's fix our, our cut here. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is what happens when you make mistakes on the fly. And hop back into Iconic. Let's grab this one more time. Bingo. There we go. 
now we actually have the appropriate media linked up. So let's marker in, marker out. And because I screwed this up, you get to accidentally see a nice other feature of Iconic, which is you'll notice that the media went offline of my sequence here. But because that particular sequence actually was called something else and I changed it to webinar, I can say upload render. And Iconic was actually tracking the fact that that was a version of this particular asset. So I'm going to say upload a new version at this point. It's going to render it with the proper name. I'm not going to screw myself over by naming my sequence the same thing as a clip in the same folder and overwriting it. Um, and if we take a look at Media Encoder, you can see that the upload is going, uploads completed at this point, and our little edit is going to start happening. So if I uh, synchronize my project quickly in Iconic, I can now say, hey, let's open this particular asset in the web browser. And if I hop over to Iconic now, you're actually going to see what's happening is that there's a new version of that sequence in process. So I created the oopsie one here, and then I fixed it. And a minute later, I'm checking that in. Um, as soon as the web proxy gets down or, uh, completed for that, all I've got to do is hop in here and say, all right, I want to request an approval and I want to get Robert's feedback on that. So I can do Kruger, whoops. I should probably do it on the correct version. Okay. At lesspain.software. I believe that's it, right, Robert? Come on. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and send that over to him. And I'm going to say, you know what? He doesn't need to download the proxy or anything like that. He can't approve comments. I'm just going to let him make comments on that. And I'm going to let him set the approval status. And I'm going to put a password on this link so that uh, no one else can see this other than him unless they have the password, even if they have the link. I'm going to hit send. And uh, what that's going to do is start a formal review and approve process inside of Iconic. So we can now see that that was sent uh, to Robert. And within a few seconds, he's actually going to get an email. And I will let him uh, take over screen share at this point so that uh, he can show us what he's getting on his end. So let me stop my screen share and turn it back over. All right. Um, I'm still waiting for the email. I don't know yeah. if my connection is slow at the moment because of the uploading that's going on in the background. Oh, but no, if I, I spelled your name wrong, that's why. Oh, OK. <laughs> So I'll fix that really quickly. I put the uh, the E before the U. So um, we'll fix this really quickly and send it to the right person. Boom. And is this good for release? And uh, same settings as before. Send. All right. Now you should actually get an email because I'm sending it to the right person. Yay. OK. I got it. And let me share my screen. So now I got the email. Uh, Mike has shared an asset with you. Is it good for release? I'm visiting the share. I enter the password. No, I don't need no password manager for it. And Okay, um, media that, oh, okay, here it is. Okay, the beginning, there's something wrong with that then. Uh, let me just add the general comment. Uh, beginning is still offline. And send that comment and I'll reject it if that's okay. Absolutely. So now that I've got the rejection, if we hop back over to, to my screen share really quickly, I can uh, share it up again. And you can see back in my world, it has a marker where that beginning is. It says beginning is offline. I see the rejection. And now I can go back into Premiere yet again and uh, start this process over again. Maybe I want to fix this issue. Maybe I just want to get rid of that clip altogether, trim this thing down, adjust it over, you know, who knows. 
And I'm going to upload a new version of the project file now to Iconic because I've actually changed my sequence and modified it. And then what I can also do is send him a new version with, uh, with the changes I've made. So I can say, all right, I want to upload this render again. I'm going to revision this yet again. I'm going to hit upload. Sure, I'm going to overwrite the, uh, the version. Oh, I just did it again. I'm silly. I did the exact same problem I did again. So the, it, it overwrite the, the same file. But <laughs> okay. um, essentially, we're going to go through this whole process. And what that actually does is because um, we did an automatic revisioning through the Premiere panel, and I'm still 100% working in proxies here, um, it actually formally started over the review and approve process as well. So if we take a look, you can see that there is a version three in progress right now that is happening. And as soon as version three is actually complete, it tells me, hey, this isn't the latest version, switch to the latest. I switched to the latest version. And you'll notice that it actually started the review process over again. And now we've got a proper edit, right? And, and uh, Robert on his end can now go and approve this and say, hey, that is good to go, right? Um, and I'll get the feedback on that uh, that process as well uh, that's going on, right? So we we can check and see what's happening. He's going to get a fresh email. the The whole process continues. Um, we won't uh, belabor you with that um, process. What we are going to show now is that okay, we've got a, a version of this uh, sequence put together now that we want to work with, and all of those high reses. We're going to pretend. Uh, but for the sake of argument that all of that content uh, that we uh, shipped over, that DIT cart came back um, from the field. And now we physically have those drives uh, and that data close to where we physically are right now. Or, you know, he dropped it uh, an SSD on into FedEx and he mailed it to me. And now I have those files, so those original high res files. So we have just transferred those across the ocean literally in any way we want. And what I'm going to actually do for this little part is I'm going to minimize Iconic and I'm going to minimize Premiere and minimize this. And I'm just going to open up the Finder. And I'm just going to go to a folder uh, on my system, on my local NAS, and I'm going to go into my webinar content and I'm going to go and say 06 Kino Partner Webinar. And then inside there, I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call it raw or MES footage. And inside this folder, I am just going to move those files, uh, the original high reses. So there's one of the, the files that uh, I've gotten already. And here's another one of those files that I've gotten already. And uh, I got one other one here that I'm going to grab real quickly. Which is downloading. Yeah. The fourth file is still transferring. Okay. Yeah, so we, we did a little bit of a, uh, we sent the original high reses uh, via a completely external method, not using Iconic, just so that you guys can, can see this example. Um, and those files are being, uh, here's the next one. So I'm just gonna, again, drag that into a folder. And then once that last one is complete, we can show this whole process. But essentially what's happened is because this particular folder that I'm using right now is actually, uh, being monitored by an iconic storage gateway here in Detroit. And because those files are the exact same files that were uh, uploaded uh, or transferred via FedEx or whatever, if I go ahead and pop back into iconic now and go take a look at those files, right? So here's 011. So we'll go take a look at 011 here. And what's going to happen here in a few seconds is our storage gateway uh, that it is running on my local machine here is actually going to check some of that file and it's going to see that it is the exact same file that existed someplace else in the world and it's going to link that right on up to the exact same asset. So I don't necessarily need to use Iconic to maintain those relationships. Um, I can just use the Finder or Windows Explorer and drag th and any transfer method we want. Now that said, we can use other transfer methods, right? So if I wanted to say uh, in a certain case uh, that a clip was, um, you know, I wanted to get the high res of that here, 
uh, I could say transfer that format and then I can send it to any storage in the world using Iconic as well. But sometimes you're not gonna transfer a terabyte worth of rushes via the internet. Sometimes you are just gonna use uh, 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 the system at that point. And what that allows me to do functionally is uh, with back within Premiere, once those things are all linked up via checksum, I have this option in Premiere where I can say reconnect original files to all proxies. And that will just go out and because those files now live on my local storage gateway, I can literally just say, okay, those are the exact same files, uh, reconnect them up. And then I could do a master out of this. So I could just do a high res master at that point here on prem. The other thing I could do is I, because this project file actually lives inside of uh, Iconic right now, I could just as easily take that project file and I could share that with Robert and he could reconnect all the original files uh, because he still has that original media. So even if we didn't transfer it, he could go simply say reconnect original files for all proxies mm -hmm. when he downloads the project and he could master it in his location. So by the way, the fourth file uh, should be up now. Okay. So uh, the general idea there is that uh, we have the ability to kind of figure out what's going on uh, within the, the system based on not necessarily using uh, the, uh, the system itself to transfer files around and be able to do these sorts of, of things. Um, so I know with, uh, you know, we've been going for about 40 minutes now, there are a few uh, questions in the uh, Q&A section. Um, so I'd like to actually do is open up now to a little bit of Q&A. So I'm gonna stop screen share for a second here and uh, uh, open it up. So um, first question is actually for Robert. Um, if an assistant editor or producer were to add other metadata in Kino, will that transfer over to Iconic or do you, you recommend all metadata is added in Iconic? Uh, at the moment, it's not transferred, but uh, we are working on changing that. So there's no, we haven't committed to a timeline on that, but that's the obvious next step. Yeah, so maybe it makes sense really quickly um, while we're kind of going through this uh, to talk a little bit about what your guys' plans are for Iconic integration. Um, I know we've talked about this, but uh, I'm sure the people on uh, on the call might be interested to know where you guys are heading in the future as well. I mean, essentially the, the same process that we've demoed with this delivery workflow um, with the only change that all metadata that you can add in Kino's field logging functionality would seamlessly transfer over to Iconic. I mean, that's basically it. Uh, let's see, I got a question here. Does Iconic recreate the Kino proxies meses or are all they taken one to one uh, from Kino to Iconic? Um, so right now, as of today, the meses are taken one to one. So uh, the files that uh, Robert sent over are immediately, you know, those can be picked up by any other storage gateway anywhere in the world. Um, but the proxies are actually generated by Iconic. Now, in the future, um, as the team at Les Payne adds more functionality in the, the native integration, it would not be difficult to also have Kino generate those proxies and generate the objects. Uh, and in that sort of a world, an, a storage gateway might not even ne be necessary on the DIT machine. The objects could just be registered with checksums against a kind of uh, floating uh, storage environment and then uh, again, delivered to any production ISG back in a facility without needing anything. So that's not there today, uh, but uh, it's very easy with all the other things that uh, the less paying team is looking to do uh, to add. They already have the the hard work done, which is the transcoder um, uploading a file is not too tough. Great, um, let's see, do we have any other questions? I'm checking chat real quick, just to make sure. Um, looks like there's no other open questions right now. Um, so I just wanted to thank everybody for joining us and taking a look at the, uh, the workflow that we put together. Um, and uh, if there are further questions, please let us know. Um, you can email myself or uh, Robert uh, for questions about either product and we 
talking to each other all the time. So we're happy to help uh, put together workflows for you guys or, or guide you in the right path. Um, and then we are going to repost this again. So if you missed part of this, uh, feel free. I will be sending out, uh, you'll see it on all the socials and on our website uh, within the next probably 24, 48 hours. So if there's no other questions, um, thanks everybody. Let, let me just add one more thing for everyone um, for whom this, this demo was too quick, which probably was almost everyone who doesn't, uh, who hasn't used Kino before, just download it and take a look at the getting started videos and you will have more time to grasp it. All right, thanks everyone. Have a great day. We'll, we'll be in touch right. soon. Thanks, Mike. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.